the breast cancer world, we are good at three things. One, awareness, because we see pink everywhere, right? <laughs> Two, diagnostics. And three, our treatment, because we see new things every single day. But the one thing that we are lacking on is the prevention. They tell you, go out, be healthy, you're gonna prevent breast cancer. Guys, I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm a, I was a D1 athlete. I eat my fruits and veggies. But four years ago, I was diagnosed with a stage three tumor. So we are doing our best for our prevention, but we can do better. So with that being said, I believe that low-dose naltroxone should be a consideration for the new prevention. So why LDN? Because actually I was looking at how I can uh, help my uh, thyroid, and I came across some studies, and they started looking at um, independent studies in, in cancer and LDN, and what we know from that is that it does reduce inflammation, it reduces tumor size. In metastatic patients, it reduced the tumor sizes or kept everything at bay. It's low cost, so it is affordable to everyone. And it has little to no side effects from the drug. So in the perfect world, I would uh, want to concentrate on three areas first. One, the BRCA positive or the breast cancer positive genes to target that area. Number two, survivors who have already completed their first uh, treatment in completion. And then the third one would be high prevalent risk factor areas based on environmental factors. So how could we check up on this? Uh, quarterly blood draws, we would uh, easily test for metabolic markers. And then in terms of time, we could put this into play almost immediately. And based on what we have seen with what it does with tumors, I predict that we could see a drastic drop in new diagnoses from that. So with all those factors in play, I don't see why this couldn't be a very good idea on how we can uh, start getting out to the masses on breast cancer prevention. Thank you. Thank you very much. And do we have any questions from the judges? I was just wondering how sure we are that there aren't side effects. I mean, what, what, have the, what are the studies that have been done, and how convinced should we be? Um, so this was actually developed in the early 80s, initially for AIDS patients, followed by um, opioid uh, addictions. Um, uh, they've used it with alcoholics. And then they've just seen that with other diseases that it has like reduced the inflammation, reduced some of those symptoms. Um, from those studies, um, other than um, opioids or um, alcoholics, if they were not adhering to the program, then yes, they would have uh, adverse side effects, but it's not to the point that it would be detrimental to their health. Any other questions from the judges? One question I had is, what's your idea about how to get women that are not sick to take a low dose of naltraxone? I think basically with your, um, uh, your annual physicals, um, your doctor's gonna have a better idea of uh, your risk factors or, um, it, or what other diseases are involved with your environment. Um, and then this could be just an, uh, an extra help. With that. Does that make sense? I, know. <laughs> I hear you, but like... I'm still wondering how you get healthy women who, you know, are, are they're saying this might prevent breast cancer. You know, if we see the results with the bracket positive or the survivors or the ones in the um, high risk environments, um, and there's a success rate with that, then we can produce that number and then we will see. So is there an idea to have two groups, one that isn't getting this or studying people that don't take it and studying people that do? Yes, and so to, um, for results for the quarterly testing, I would look at um, who is adhering in the program uh, versus new diagnoses that are not in our program. All right. Yes, ma'am. How would you monitor whether you were getting the intended effect of the drug on breast cancer risk? It's going to have to be like any other program. We'd probably do uh, surveys and then, of course, the, the blood markers. Um, it, it's with any program. We're going to have to kind of hope for program adherence. 
Dr. Lau. Is there any epidemiology data that, su that would suggest that this might work? Is, is there, the question was, is there any epidemiology data that would suggest that this might work? For the prevention, this has not been looked at at all. Um, but for um, tumors and then with metastatic tumors, that is, there's been a good amount of uh, independent studies, mostly in 2016 and 17 is where they're coming up. But that's where I got the idea. Because if it shrinks tumors already, in theory, why would not it not keep anything from growing on top of that? Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you.